this is brother teacher are you in a bad relationship today are you really in a bad relationship I'm sure it doesn't take uh, an expert to diagnose whether or not you are in a relationship that is not healthy for you or the other individual or even both of you and I would venture to say that if you're having a hard go of the relationship then it would only be obvious that the other partner is having the same problem so what's really going on um, I personally in my lifetime have experienced what I term as a bad relationship and of course let's clarify what we're saying when we say bad relationship first of all I'm talking about partnership and marriage if you're in that type of relationship that's the premise of this particular video now it's not my intention to keep you long I just want to touch on what I think is the most important things and where do we go from here it's a very sensitive subject for most especially if you are within that situation not someone who's an outsider per se so as I forestated I've been in bad relationships in my life before and I'm sort of an expert uh, I can't speak for anyone else but fundamentally the situations the, the causes and the effects are the same for most so are you not talking to your partner you're not talking to one another and why is it that you're not talking to one another when in the very beginning of your relationship you had a mutual care a mutual love for one another what happened along the way everyone's situation is different and it's based on one or many factors oftentimes it's because of economics uh, one partner um, probably has carried the load in the relationship from a financial standpoint and they're tired of carrying that load or they're not able or capable any longer to carry that load because of varying uh, situations outside that they don't have any control over. They could have lost uh, part of the income, they could have more financial financial responsibilities and uh, that's a bit much for them to carry the house you and those other uh, obligations could be both partners were working and one partner lost their income if not all of it part of it and it's affecting the whole it could be some infidelity in a relationship at some point between one or even both partners it could be uh, in-laws it could be the children. It could be children that one partner already had going into the relationship and the other one uh, has conflict with those children and or the partner concerning the children. How to raise them in the discipline in the house and things of this nature to include finance. It could be a number of things but whatever it is ladies and gentlemen how do we deal with it? I may not be able to resolve each and every one's problem individually that's watching me right now but I can at least kind of scrape the surface and give you some potential hope all I'm going to say is this all of us men and women we are all important sometimes we get into relationships for the wrong reasons. Now you can analyze your own situation and you can determine or come to a conclusion as to why you got into the relationship in the first place. But that's neither here nor there now because it's behind you. It's behind us. The problem in the situation is what's going on today. Are you bitter in that relationship? Are you torn? Are you distraught? Do you feel helpless and hopeless? I want to say that none of us deserves to be in a relationship forever and we are sad. 
and we are devastated and we are uh, unhappy why are we still there why are we still here for some of us sometimes economics tie us to a relationship and we feel bound we feel as though if we were to leave the relationship or it were to be dissolved that we would experience a financial crisis because we can't carry a load for ourselves and so we stay there anyway I want to encourage you to take a deep breath not just right now but throughout the day and every day and make a big boy big girl decision sometimes it's best to leave a relationship no matter what the ties are especially if there are infidelity issues if your partner has cheated on you and I mean cheated and you choose not to be there anymore we can choose not to be in a relationship and still be physically in the same home but when are you going to take the step and actually leave do you have an exit strategy do you have an abusive partner that could potentially harm you if they knew especially women if they knew that you were going to leave the relationship do you think they're going to put their hands on you and hurt you because they feel like uh, they can't make it without you or they feel like they have a certain control over you well you don't deserve that you need to start planning away from that partner after you have exhausted conversation or attempts at conversation you sit down with the other person in your life the significant other or former significant other and you say listen we need to have an intelligent conversation a talk a dialogue between the two of us and I don't have any intentions of shouting and I would respect and appreciate that you not shout as well we're just having a conversation if it gets to the point where you start to raise your voice I will remind you that we're not shouting because we cannot accomplish this excuse me we can't accomplish anything in this conversation if we cannot understand what one another is saying you speak I'll give you the floor I will allow you the space to speak and I will listen no matter how hard or difficult it is to listen to whatever the subject matter is and I will do the same thing in kind once you're done speaking I appreciate it if you're quiet and then I will speak my side and we will continue this dialogue and hopefully we will get to a point where we can make a decision as to where do we go from here that is how you approach a conversation ladies and gentlemen if both people are shouting there's no communication there's no purpose in talking if one individual is shouting there's no purpose in having a conversation so you must get to the point if you're male or female or male and male and female and female you listen to what I'm telling you right now if you can't talk on the level that I'm speaking right now then your relationship is doomed already communication is number one is key now regardless of the subject matter you need to be willing to listen to it either one of you if it's infidelity and you know that the other person has cheated as hard as it is to speak it and as emotionally involved that it may cause you to become take a deep breath and speak your mind in a calm as possible fashion and then you go from there now as I said a moment ago no human being deserves to be in a relationship for the rest of their natural lives and they are miserable we all deserve the best on this planet as we possibly can receive and we should not be 
an instrument of our own demise. In other words, we shouldn't kill our own selves by living in misery in a situation where we're not wanted, where we're not loved, and where we're not appreciated. I'm not talking about uh, a feeling that you feel. I'm talking about actually not loved and not appreciated and not wanted because of evidential facts. So now, are you that individual that has been abused in a relationship? It's time for you to leave. If you have exhausted conversation upon conversation upon conversation and nothing has changed for the positive, it's time to go. If you're that individual that has had your partner cheat on you, it's up to you if you want to decide to stay or remain with that individual. And you also have the choice to leave. Let the chips fall where they may. They don't have to like it or love it. And it doesn't have to feel good, but it might be for your own good to leave and start again. Start all over again with yourself in mind. The most important person or individual in a relationship is you. Because if you're not good, everyone outside of you is not good. So you make the decision on what it takes for you to be good. If you're coming home to abusive language, to a physical abuse, it's not the place for you. Unless you are crazy and you enjoy it. But other than that, it's not the place for you. And that's on either side, male or female. If you're coming home and your spouse is calling you names, they're talking down to you on a regular basis. They're telling you that you're worthless, that you're no good. That is emotional attack. You don't deserve that. Let's say it were true. It's still wrong. That individual on the other side that's saying those things to you need to stop and have a real conversation with you like I'm having right now same tone of voice if you're living in a home where you know that your partner has been unfaithful to you and they continue to be unfaithful to you and you know this for a fact I'm not talking about guessing it you know it for a fact I don't want to know any details but if you know it for a fact you deserve better If you're in a relationship where your partner has children by a previous relationship, even both of you have children and there's a conflict constantly about the children and about discipline in the home and that the children are getting away with certain things and then when you try to discipline the child or the children, the parent, the biological parent of those children attacks you when all you're doing is trying to keep a balance in the home. That's not the place for you. Now, I'm saying that it's not the place for you after you have exhausted your attempts to have a dialogue with your significant other. And you should attempt to have several conversations. After the first one fails, try it again. And the second one, try it again. The third one, try it again. And as we progress out of the, all of these attempts to communicate, towards the last conversation that you have with your partner you need to let them know I've attempted several times to come to some resolution concerning this matter and you have ignored me you have ignored the situation totally I'm not happy here I believe and I feel that it's necessary for my sanity that I leave this situation do I need to put it in writing for you to understand and if I did, would you read it? And if you read it, would it matter? You see, ladies and gentlemen, brother teacher has gone through this before. How you can tell someone that you love them and they don't tell you that they love you back. 
I've gone through this in the past. How you are trying to discipline the children in the home that are otherwise unruly. Not to say children won't be children and play and so on and so forth. But there has to come a time when you have to plant your feet firmly as a mother or father and say, there are rules in this house and that's it. In order to a balance, I cannot allow my children to be equal to me or to be greater than me. I am the father or you're the mother. I'm the parent and you are the child. That's it. There's the difference. You don't tell me what to do. I'm speaking about the children. The children don't tell you what to do. You tell them what to do. You don't ask them what to do. Now tell them what to do does not mean that you are a slave driver or master or some sort of uh, fearful image to them. For example, I walk in the camp. This is me, hypothetically speaking. And my son is in there. I say, hey, uh, so-and-so, go upstairs and empty the garbage can. He does it. He says, 